Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a great question from Claudia. Claudia asks, is there a simple way to light a group in a studio? Well, Claudia, absolutely there is a very simple way and the cool thing is you can do it with one light. You don't need a bunch of lights to accomplish the task. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that with one light and I'm also gonna show you how to do it with three lights and this will work in a big studio and it works even better actually in a small studio. The only thing you really need to have is a white wall for this to work because we're gonna be bouncing light all over the place. Now, one of the things that we're gonna talk about is the effect of something called the inverse square law. So if that's something that's new to you, you might wanna uh, watch episode 59 of Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one, where we talk all about the inverse square law and how that affects studio lights. Well, let's get going. We'll go into the studio and I'll show you all these setups and then you can do it yourself in your own studio. All right, well, let's talk about shooting groups. My little group today is Diane. We have Kelsey and Jack here. We're also gonna add Michael, our videographer, uh, in a little bit and I'm gonna hop in as well. So we've got a group of five people. Now, what we're doing here is I wanna make sure that uh, we keep this really simple. And so we're gonna light this up using only one light. And that's what I recommend for groups. And let me tell you why. So if we walk over here, let me show you the lighting setup. What I have is I'm using a very large Octabox. This is a Flashpoint Octabox um, and it's, placed about 24 feet from our subject. I'm also shooting with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens on my Nikon. I'm triggering this with the pocket wizard. But let me show you the distance between my flash and where we're shooting. So if I walk over here, this is actually a little over 20 feet. And I know that because I know the distance of our walls is 24 feet. And so I've placed the light quite a ways away. And the reason for that is the inverse square law that we covered a few weeks ago. And what that means is when I place a light far away, well, that light gets larger and larger. And so the fall off makes our light very even across a big distance. And to prove that, what I can do is I can meter this. So I'm gonna meter over here and it meters at F9. And I meter here, again, it's F, F, F9 meter here, F9, meter over here. Again, it's F9. If I come up here a little bit, it's F9. And so all over here, I've got this big space where I'm metering at F9, which means if a person's standing here, they're gonna be exposed the exact same if they're standing over here. So for a large group of people, that works just perfectly. Because we have a really big source of light, the light's gonna be really, really soft. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna have our group come back, we're gonna set them up, and I'm gonna show you how we can deal with some shadows. So we're actually gonna stagger these guys. Now, what we're doing is here, we're trying to block Jack's face, not because he's ugly, but because I wanna show you that because the light's bouncing everywhere in this enclosed space, we're actually not gonna have any shadows on his face, which is what we want for a large group of people. So now that we have you guys set up, I'm gonna come over here to the camera and I'm gonna take a couple shots and we'll show you how it looks. So, all right, you guys, say cheese. Well, you can see with a single source of light, with a really large light source, you can get some really nice group shots. But what happens if you don't have a Profoto 1200 watt second pack and a large Octabox? Well, that's what we're gonna show you next. What I've used over here is an Alien B, just a single Alien B. It's a B800 and it's blasting right into this white wall. And what is happening is this white wall is becoming our source of light. It's just this really large, soft source of light. And so that source of light is gonna come traveling this way and it's gonna hit our group just like our Octabox did before. Now this isn't as powerful of a source of light because it's A, it's not as many watt seconds and it's bouncing off the wall. And so we're gonna meter again. And when I meter, I'm getting 7.1 at ISO 200. And again, if I meter all around these guys, it's consistently 7.1. So we get that nice, consistent, even light. So let me take a couple of shots using our Alien B against a white wall. And we'll show you that we get very similar results as we did with our big Octabox. All right, well, I've shown you two different lighting setups, one using a single Profoto light and one using an Alien B. Well, I wanna show you one more lighting setup and just to show you that you can do this with almost any type of light. What we've done is I'm gonna use some Novatrons and I bought these guys used from a friend and uh, they were about 10 years old, something like that when I bought them got them for about $100. But what we've done, instead of just using one light, I've set up three lights that are bouncing off this large wall. 
And these guys don't have much power. They're about 166 watt seconds, so not a lot, but because we're combining all of that power, it adds up to about 500 watt seconds. And when we come over here, you can see that again, when I meter, I am metering right at about F8 across all of our subjects. And so we, again, get that nice inverse square law effect, get nice soft even light because we're using that large white wall as our source of light. So we're gonna bounce that, we're gonna shoot some shots and show you how these look, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, well, there you have it. Three different lighting setups, all to light groups of people. Now, I only showed you five people in this setup, but you could actually do this with you know, 10 or 15 people. As long as you have those white walls where light's gonna bounce around and fill in the shadows, it works really, really well. In fact, I was uh, on tour a couple years ago and we took a group shot of about 60 people using a single light and just bounced it off the wall and it looked really great. And so I know it works, it's really easy and it's really affordable as well. Well, thanks so much for the question, Claudia. Remember, if you're like Claudia and have something that you'd like to ask, you can send your question to me at askmark at adorama.com, and I just might use it on an upcoming episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store, located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Did you notice that? <laughs> That's strange. Great group pictures that are a little cheesy.